according to Muslim sources. Muhammad had sex with his prepubescent nine-year-old child bride Aisha. Yeah, see, so yeah. so you see, I have to yeah, interject yeah. here. So again, he repeats the same lie about about Aisha. I mean, this has yeah. been answered like a gazillion times. I I don't I lost count how many <laughs> times I've tried to answer this uh, this uh, issue. I want it to be over and done with. I'm tired, boss. And yet, yeah. you know, Christians keep coming up with the same repetitious lie. Uh, let's yeah. not forget. Let's so to answer to counter that claim, they should look into yeah. the Bible where Isaac married a three-year-old Rebecca. Okay? So how yeah. about that? The father of the Jews is a dad. Okay? is a married a pre prepubescent girl. Okay? Of yeah. three years old. Okay? Using their logic. Okay? So um, I've answered this a gazillion times. I think you can find the video on my channel even. So I'm not going to waste my time repeating, you know, answering this, refuting this, this lie about about Aisha's uh, marriage, you know, the marriage of Aisha to the Prophet. Um, but to summarize, the marriage of Aisha with uh, the Prophet ﷺ was a happy one. She never complained about, about her marriage. So why do these Christians, you know, think that they have the authority to complain about Aisha's marriage to the Prophet? You know, I've always wondered why, why, why these Christians are suddenly feminists. They... I know the power of patriarchy. I know what men can do when they're angry. I wore this ridiculous thing for you. Your move, my friends. Want to uh, as though as they want to, you know, defend Aisha, you know, but in yeah. reality, you know, they are trying to demean the prophet. I mean, are you are you guys speaking on behalf of Aisha? Because Aisha herself did not ask for your help. Okay. Yeah. So why the why the f are you talking about this when you know, when there's no issue? Brother, at all? can I can I yeah. share something? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so so this claim that he made that you know child bride is absolutely false because and I made a video on this and in the video I showed uh, I made a, the video against Apos. Alhamdulillah. And you guys can check yeah. out the video. I'll put the link below. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so in the video I made it very clear that Aisha Radhanu herself did not see herself as a child. No one yeah. around her saw herself as a child. And she yeah. constantly mentions herself as a young lady or woman, mm -hmm. right? And as a matter of fact, you can even see in hadiths that she was actually very tall for her age. So basically, she was a teenager. Yes. So, yes. Uh, for example, uh, in this hadith, you can read uh, in one place. Uh, so basically, in the hadith, it describes uh, there's a in the day of uh, Eid. So basically, uh, the Prophet asked Aisha if she wanted to see, like, uh, one of the guys were playing with spears, if she wanted to see that. And, uh, and he, and she uh, agreed. And then the Prophet, and check this out, uh, made me stand behind him and my cheek was touching his cheek. Now, do you think a child would be as tall as a Prophet? Exactly. She was a teenager. I mean, she was nine year old, yes, but she was very grown for her age. And that's the point. And this whole idea that she was like this child bride and Apostle Prophet, like, did you saw the video of Apostle Prophet regarding um, Aisha? I haven't, I haven't yet, but inshallah, I will. <laughs> I didn't know that Apostle Prophet wrote, I had a video on that because I don't deal with mutats. Okay. I don't, that's not my, that's not my calling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But, yeah, but so I will, inshallah. Yeah. Yeah, basically, uh, he made a video where <clears throat> where he showed this picture of like this grown man holding the hand of, of the of the like this child, which is false. <laughs> That's not how it was. Like they were like of this, uh, they were almost as tall as each other. And the prophet was quite tall himself, so she was physically mature. This is not something they want to tell people because they want to make them seem like she was like this child who doesn't know what they were doing, even though she herself considered herself a, a woman or a young woman. And, you know, and she was like wearing hijab because you wear hijab after like puberty. And she was as tall as a prophet and still like this, like call her a child, which is ridiculous. Yes, exactly. Exactly. They want to make her out as though she's helpless. She's unable to defend herself. She's yeah, not yeah. intelligent enough to, to you know, yeah. to... In fact, we have records of the, in the hadith where, you know, where Aisha argued with the prophet. I mean, would a child <laughs> argue with an adult? I mean, there's so many... There's so many others where the prof where Aisha actually fought against the verbally, of course, 
I know when argued against the prophet when she ever she disagreed with something and she's not she's not a shy person who would want to hide her feelings she would actually you know she would actually you yeah. know uh, argue against the prophet does, does this sound like a child to you <laughs> yeah <I agree. laughs> you know yeah I mean, it's, 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 it's nonsense. Nonsense. It's nonsense. Yeah, it's nonsense. I mean, this polemic has been going on for years. So, um, I can tell you, by the way, this polemic, um, well, because I have been in apologics for a long time, this yeah. uh, this polemic was first started by this um, Arab Christian. Until today, we don't know who he is, uh, called Silas. Okay? He posted this article on uh, Answering Islam, because Answering Islam is where everything began. Uh, where he, you know, where he wrote a very long article about the marriage of Aisha. Before that happened, before he posted that article, nobody knew or cared about uh, the marriage of Aisha on the internet. Okay, this was in nine. This was in nineteen ninety eight. Okay, this wow. lie started in nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, I was still new. I was still considered a green, a green horn in the apologetics world, but <laughs> I started to follow everyone. So um, and then uh, later on, it was picked up by that Bota Sham Shamoon. <laughs> and um and then um uh it was still because the internet at the time between 1998 to 2005 2006 it was still contained in the virtual world because um not many people have access to the internet at this in this time right so yeah. um it wasn't widespread outside of the internet nobody knows about this polemic okay it was only when you know facebook started becoming popular instagram all the social media you know all the social twitter everything started becoming popular that is when uh, this lie about the marriage of Aisha started to spread wildly and it became out of oh, control. By the way, can yeah. I read a comment? This is funny. Okay, so there's this comment. Sure. For Christian uh, Apologetics which... 2021. Okay, let me, show, let me show this comment. This is not just Dr. J. Smith and David, but they, this was brought up by Islamic scholar Robert Smith. <laughs> That bearded moron is a scholar. Oh my god. You know, my cat <laughs> will probably be quali more qualified to talk about Islam than that uh. moron, Robert Spencer. I'm telling you that. Okay, my cat has more qualification. Okay, <laughs> right? My cat can uh. talk better. Okay, she can meow better. <laughs> okay, all right? Uh, okay, I have more respect for my cat than I do Robert Spencer. <laughs> Right, <laughs> that is how low I think of Robert Spencer because he's not a scholar. Okay, yeah. he's just an Islamophobe. He's he's <laughs> as much of a scholar as Christian princes. Uh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I put the mirror in front of me. I lose. I don't debate myself. Once I debated myself, I lost. Okay, so this is Richard of uh, Shrewsbury. He's a Duke of uh, York, and he basically got married at the age of four. Okay, two, and let me share this. Now, can you see it? Yep, yep, I can see it. I can see it. Okay. So Anna of, or Anna de Mowbray, and she was basically a Duchess of York, and she was married to this boy, this uh, four-year-old year old boy, and she was uh, like five years of age. So I can read this. Anna de Mowbray, eighth uh, Countess of Norfolk, later Duchess of York. Yeah, this is actually common and among does. European loyalty in this era yeah, yeah. in the Middle Ages. Yeah, very, November very uh, 1481 was the child bride of Richard of Strugbury, Duke of York, one of the princes uh, in the tower. She died at the age of eight. Okay, so here it says, it talks about marriage. On January 15, uh, on 15 January uh, 1478, age five, she was married to Stephen Chapel. Uh, Westminster of Richard of uh, Strawberry, uh, Stro Shrewsbury, uh, Duke of York, four-year-old younger son, uh, King Edward, and his uh, queen, Elizabeth uh, Woodfield. They even have a picture. You see this? Yep, yep, I can see it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, this is the good example yeah. of child brides. Child <laughs> groom and bride. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it's it's it's, it's hypocrisy, yeah. and also uh, like I found it's this. It's actually like, not really. Uh, it's actually not hypocrisy as much as it is ignorance. Okay, it's also about ignorance as well. So yeah, yeah, it's about ignorance of their own history. You see, because yeah. in Europe this is normal. Okay, in the Middle yeah. Ages, you know, royalty marry, giving off their child as a bride or as a groom to another royal family in order to establish ties. This is normal. This is normal yeah. in that era. 
okay yeah. okay so, so actually uh, you know yeah. uh, christian stack exchange this website like where christians ask question yeah uh hold on let me share this yeah go ahead and so share someone it. actually asked a question there regarding this okay and so basically they asked like i saw in this in this movie like you know uh, this young girl was married to like uh, you know this uh, young boy for, uh, for example let me read this i was watching a fictional series situated in uh, the france where a girl princess aged eight married a 18 year old man prince through the catholic church i wonder whether that was actually possible some people here it says that it was permissible and fully legal for children below the age of consent to marry in the catholic church <laughs> provided they had papal distribution uh, such dispensation were granted mainly for diplomatic reasons so yeah even they are like admitting this like people who actually yeah. know yeah but because evangelicals like a lot of evangelicals yeah, yeah. don't know this. Uh, yeah, the Protestants will just the Protestants will just deny this history and say, "Oh, the Catholics are cafe." They are kufa. They are kufa. We are the true yeah. church. We representing yeah. the true Christ. You see, but this is yeah. just a for for to I mean to us it's no different. I mean, whether you are Catholic or you are Protestant, you are both Christians. Okay, yeah. <laughs> doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah, and uh, another, uh, I think they quote a bunch of, like, for example, Isabella of Wallace, uh, yes. the daughter of King Charles VI uh, of France, married King Richard II of England. Mm -hmm. And she was of six and he was of 29. She was six <laughs> years old and married a 29 year old man. There you go. So. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You see the hypocrisy of these Christians. <laughs> yeah. So, about? you know, in, yeah. in the Bible, they can yeah. take concubines. Yeah, just numbers. And okay, there's I'm nothing to... in the Bible that says that you need their permission. For example, yeah, I mean, can you share I'm Bible verse? To, I'm, yeah, I, I'm going to show the I'm going to show the Bible uh, passage where which you're talking about the Bible verse uh, which talks about uh, a lot of nasty things happening. This, by the way, during the time of Moses, all right? Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, vengeance on the Midianites. Okay, I always like to quote this verse to them to the Christians when you know when they talk about. The so-called war you know against uh in in islamic history and they have no answer to this okay mm -hmm. so vengeance on the midianites the lord said to moses take vengeance on the midianites for the israelites after that you'll be gathered to your people so moses said to the people arm some of your men to go to war against the midianites so that they may carry out the lord's vengeance on them send into battle a thousand men from each of the tribes of israel so times 12 okay mm -hmm. uh, okay then uh let me skip this they fought against the Midian, sorry, they fought against Midian as the Lord commanded Moses and killed every man, okay, and <laughs> killed every man. And then <laughs> among of, and then they also mentioned the victim names, the victims yeah. names. Yeah. And then um, the Israelites captured the Midianite women and children and yeah. took all the Midianite herds, flocks and goods as plunder. So basically yeah. um, the, the people, the Mo Moses and his men were, were robbers, huh? Yeah. I mean, according to the Christian logic, okay. Yeah. According to Christian logic, uh, Moses and his men were robbers, okay. Yeah. So and they uh, said, that, you know, yeah. uh, you know, and they said the prophet were, yeah, <laughs> and they said the prophet Solomon and Salah were, were robbers. See, so this is clearly plunder. Right? It clearly says this: the Israelites captured the media women and children, took all the media and girls, <laughs> frogs and goods as plunder. They mm -hmm. burned all the towns where Midianites had settled, as well as all their camps. They took yeah. all the plunder and spoils, including the people and animals, and brought yeah. the captives, spoils and plunder to Moses and Eliezer the priest. Okay. And yeah. then uh okay, and then um okay, this is another interesting part, huh? In in verse number 14, Moses was angry with the officers of the army. Okay, take note, huh? According to the Bible, the prophet Moses was angry with the <laughs> Israelites. Now the question yeah. is why? Okay, why was he yeah. angry? The answer is uh, Moses asked, have you allowed all the women to leave? He asked them. <laughs> they were the ones who followed Balaam's advice and enticed the Israelites to be unfaithful to the Lord. Okay. Now kill yeah. all the boys and kill every woman who has slept with a man. <laughs> but save for yourselves every girl who has never <laughs> slept with a man. I mean, uh. the reason why the Prophet Moses, okay, alayhi salam, in the in this chapter was angry with the israelites was because they did not kill the women 
<laughs> you understand, do you understand that do you understand this the implications yeah. of this so you're so you're actually you no know, the bible is actually saying that the prof that the moses allows for once his people to kill everyone including the women yeah. okay and also another interesting thing is that he said kill every woman who slept with a man meaning probably a wife <laughs> a, a wife lah, okay but save yeah. for yourself every girl who has never slept with a man sex 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 <laughs> Nothing, nothing, you sickle. Every girl who has never slept with a man. So basically, he's saying to rape the captives, <coughs> rape the virgin yeah. captives, right? Yeah. Okay? yeah. Uh, and then it, the the verse goes on. Uh, anyone who has killed someone or touched someone who was killed must stay outside the camp. Blah 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 blah. Uh, this is an interesting story. Um, so it says that King Solomon had loved uh, loved many foreign women besides Pharaoh's daughter, uh, Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites. Sidomites and Hitherites, uh, they were from nations uh, about which the Lord had told the Israelites, you must not intermarry with them because they will surely turn your hearts after their uh, gods. Uh, yeah, hold on. Uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> nevertheless, Solomon held fast to them in love. He had 700 wives, and uh, get this, he had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines. This is David, sorry, Solomon. So Solomon had 300 concubines. Oh yeah, this one clarifies that David is like a prophet, right? Uh, yeah, one thing about, about the Christians, right? Some of them actually argue, sometimes if you ask them about David's <laughs> actions, they actually deny yeah. that David was a prophet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I wanted to share this. <laughs> okay. okay, so from 13 to 16 if you go 13 okay here we go david flees uh, a messenger came and told david that hearts of people of israel are with absalom then david said to all his officials who were with him in jerusalem come we must flee or none of us will escape from absalom we must leave immediately or he will move quickly to overtake us and being and bring ruin on us and put the city to the sword the king's official answered him, your servants are ready to go whenever our Lord, uh, the king chooses. The king set out with his entire household following him and he left 10 concubines to take care of the palace. So David, being a prophet, he had concubines. So, yeah, yeah. like, it's, it's, it's a normal practice for kings and, yeah, yeah. and kings of Israel yeah. to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's another thing, there's a, a book uh, where it says that uh, Barozia, uh, is a woman who became a concubine of 45 year old Pope uh, Sargius III when she was 15 and later took on other husbands and lovers. You can actually read about this. <laughs> yeah, you see, that's the problem with Christians, they don't read the history. <laughs> yeah, you see, this unzipped. Okay, I can see it. Yeah. yeah, this is the name of the book Unzipped The Pope's Bear All A Frank Study of Sex and Corruption in the Vatican. Yeah. So yeah, you can read this and and also early Christians actually allowed men to have concubines. Uh, did you know this? So oh, okay. okay. Let me uh, share this. So basically, the Council of Toledo, which was held like in the four four hundred, in its seventeenth uh, uh, canon, legislate as uh, follows for laymen. Uh, after pronouncing a sentence of excommunication against any who, in addition to a wife, keeps a concubine, it says. But if a man has no wife, but a concubine instead of a wife, let him uh, not be refused communion. Only let him content to be uh, united with one woman, whether wife or concubine. So basically you can read about this. Hold on, let me just share. Yeah, I mean, this is, yeah, this is, I think, <laughs> it's so obvious, right? The, the hypocrisy of the Christians, right? When it comes to such matters. Yeah. 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 Can you see this? Yep, yep, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, this yeah. one. I can see it, yeah. 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 So this is, this is, by the way, encyclopedia, like the Catholic encyclopedia. Counselor Toledo. So they allowed concubines. Yeah. They allowed concubines, and now they're... <laughs> they're <laughs> now they're against about... it. No, 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 no they're, just, they're just making noise about it. Because, like like you said, um, Christians today are, are motivated by liberal, secular values. They're not nothing to do with religion now. So, um, 
nothing to do even with the Bible. So they just impose their secular liberal views upon the Bible. Yeah. So when Muslims, you know, follow the Quran and um, basically do something which the, their, even their Bible allows, uh, yeah. they just make a lot of noise about it. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the <laughs> that's basically the the essence of it.